Hello. We are entering our seventh month of this pandemic. And last week, we hit an all-time high with the number of new cases, over 45,000 nationwide. One of the main reasons that I am speaking to, hopefully, the uh, members there at Faith Missionary Church and everybody in general is because this is not normal. Um, it is just as dangerous as it once was or has ever been. And I'm led to do something a bit different. Mm -hmm. Doing a live uh, Facebook stream, if you will, on a Friday afternoon. I rushed in uh, from work I uh, got my thoughts together, but I'm, I want to stress the importance of, of maintaining uh, our patience during this time of pandemic. And I just want to bring out a few pointers. As I said last week, we had an all-time high of new cases, over 45,000 nationwide. Now, the good news is that the death rate is declining. But this is probably due in part to most of the new cases are young people. Uh, if you can call that good news. Young people are, although they get sick, they uh, don't re readily pass on. Uh, their resilience uh, to fight off the illness is better or stronger, if you will, uh, than older individuals. So though the death rate is declining, it's because of the new cases being mainly young people. And I'm told these young people are from ages 18 to 34. So again, in any crisis, the biggest thing that is needed is leadership. That is the impetus for me doing this live stream during the week and not on a Sunday is because where there's a lack of leadership, the people actually perish and they suffer. And can I say right here that most of the ills and the woes that this nation is now experiencing is because of a lack of clear, sound, solid leadership. And people are impatient, they're, they're wanting to get out I want to say right here that our governor is to be commended for pausing the reopening uh, and for mandating the wearing of masks. Uh, if you do have to go out, please, for God's sake, wear a mask. When you see people walking uh, less than six feet apart, when they're convening in groups and they're not wearing a mask, two, one or two things are, are, are prevalent. Either they're so ignorant that they don't understand the danger that, uh, that they're putting themselves in, but know this, they're putting others in danger. By me wearing a mask, I am not only adhering to the mandate of the state, because the governor has made it mandatory now, but I am also saying that I'm concerned about the welfare of those that I come into contact with. For me, not to wear a mask is a very selfish thing to do. Uh, for me to go out without a mask says that I don't care about anybody but me. We are indeed our brother's keeper. We are indeed our sister's keeper. So we have a social responsibility uh, to wear a mask when we're out in, in public. Now, there is an attitude that I just don't understand. Uh, people who refuse authoritative directives, such as wearing a mask. For whatever reason, they, they, they are so selfish. And remember, our very nature is one of selfishness. When we choose not to care about anybody but ourselves. And I'm speaking mainly now to the young people. I was young one time, and I remember the feeling of invincibility, like uh, I can't be touched. 
But can I say right here that it's the young people now that are filling up our hospital beds and our hospital rooms. Uh, I'm speaking especially to the youth there at, at, at Faith. Uh, what's wrong? I know you, 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 you want to get out the house and you want to visit, but this is not a time of visitation. I just want to point something out to you. Say you go out to one or two friends. I'm not going to see that many people, but if you have not been tested, and if they have not been tested, you risk the possibility of bringing that disease back into your home. If you still stand there with mom and dad, you put mom and dad at risk. You put grandma at risk and grandpa at risk, your siblings at risk. And if you have children, they have no say so, and you thrust them out into the unknown. Until there is a cure, until there's a vaccine in sight, this is not a time of visitation. And I believe it's because of lust. And I just want to speak just a moment about lust. Lust uh, is stereotypically said to be something that is of a, a sensual nature. But in fact, lust doesn't have to have anything to do with sex at all. Lust is a strong desire to have whatever. You can want something so badly that it will blind you to the facts of the truth. It will spiritually blind you uh, to the point where when you want something, you will do whatever it takes until you achieve it or have it. Uh, and, and, I, and I say again that this is not a time uh, of visitation. Um, I will also uh, want to point out, uh, I know we're all experiencing uh, the racial tension that is in our society. And I, I'm, I'm with the, the Black Lives Matter movement. I support it uh, 100%. But I just want to say right here that all lives matter. And, I, and, and I'm not downplaying it. Uh, I get that. I'm black. Uh, so I understand the struggle. I understand the fight. I'm right there with you. But I want to say that all, mat all lives matter. And I want to speak specifically uh, to the pulpits, uh, not of color, but my white brothers, my white sisters in the clergy. We hear you and we commend you for speaking loud and strong standing up for justice in the womb. But I want you, I want to hear, why is there a deafening silence for we who make it to our tomb? If there should be a voice for the unborn, shouldn't there also be a voice for those who live life in black skin or skin of color? I just want to say here, until the universal church comes together uh, and, 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 do, and totally does away with prejudice. And I want to say right here that all of us are prejudiced to some degree. Prejudice is taught. It is not innate. We're not born prejudice. It is a learned behavior. And if prejudice can be taught, so can love. So can inclusion. We as Christians have a mandate of God to love everyone and to demonstrate it by our actions and not just by our words alone. So again, uh, I've said enough. It is so important that uh, I felt it my part to, as a leader of a church, to not be silent, to speak out on a Friday and say that this is not a time of visitation. This is not a time to to let our guard down until there is a vaccine in hand, one that works, and or a medicine that can treat or cure this, it is just as dangerous as inception. And I, I want to say this, God and him alone will let us know when it is again safe to reopen whatever. God, not the governor, not the president, but God will let us know. And how will we know that God has spoken? I'm so glad you asked. Look no further than your spiritual leaders. There was a time in which the church led in matters like this. 
because they had a ear to the word of God, but also the voice of God. Through your spiritual leaders, whether they're nationwide leaders, whether they're local city-wide leaders, or just clergy in your local community, listen for a consensus from them to say, now is safe. And until then, we need to maintain and keep it moving, but stay inside, social distance and wear that mask. The word of God says in Proverbs 11, chapter, uh, chapter 11, verse 14, where no counsel is, the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors, their safety. I bid you Godspeed again. This is a life and death situation. Please sow seeds that when, when your harvest comes to fruition, it will be one that you certainly uh, can live with. You can live with the consequences and also live with your choices. We're praying for you. Stay safe, but also stay sound. Good evening.